Notes towards a dialectical theater deconstructed, reconstructed, and ultimately discarded a love story by Les Hunter. Characters. Point A, a woman of any age, black or, or white, red, yellow, blue, green, presents a dialectic, always addresses the audience unless otherwise noted. Phil calls her by, her, by the name of the actress playing her part. Phil, a man, the subject of the dialectic, same age, race qualifications, point A, addresses point A by the name of the actor. Setting, a stage, a line on the stage physically separates point A and Phil. Time, now. A stage, point A enters and puts up a sign that says, Stasis, all the world is green. Point A addresses the audience. Hi, how are you? I'd like to begin. I'm here to present you with a dialectic. Hi, I'm Phil. Point A does not respond to Phil. Present maybe isn't right. I want to open up the possibilities of a dialectical theater to turn it on its head. I hate parties. Everybody just, you know, talks. I have this fragile little hope that maybe I'll do something new. It's not like anybody ever says anything new. This is what I'm going to do. I'll take a traditional, well-made play, as you can see it's already begun, and I'll dissect it using Brecht's idea of theater as a space to present opposing thoughts, a kind of demonstration of a pure dialectical theater. I just never see the point. Actually, I have two of them. Tonight you can call me point A. And now to begin. In a traditional narrative, we now experience stasis. The true king is on the throne and we dwell within the garden. But peace is boring, so on with the show. Point A places a sign on stage that reads, Intrusion, wherein the protagonists meet. I didn't catch your name. That's right, you didn't say it. Point A holds up a sign with the actor's name on it. Lori, really? That's a fantastic name. Can I get you a drink? I know, kind of a lame opening. But, but you, you have, have to, to start, start somewhere. somewhere. Oh, I almost forgot about him. Think of him as point B. But you can call him Phil, if you want. Tomorrow's another matter. Maybe tomorrow in another theater, he'll be Biff. He'll push back the door to reveal his father. This man who he played football, played football with, with, on, with the on the front lawn. lawn. This, this man, man who came, came home every day and gave his, his mother a rose. rose. This, this man, man this, this father. father. We'll have another lover. Biff will discover his father is a liar. He'll be heartbroken. You're an actress. I saw you in something. Tonight, we can call him Phil. It was one of those little shows that you go to somewhere near Gordon Square. I had this friend who was always dragging me to stuff like that. In terms of dramatic structure, we would call his interruption into the narrative an intrusion. You go to one because you feel like you have to, but then you realize you would rather have a beer and watch the Cavaliers. With good reason. The thing is, I remember you. You were a gay girl who wanted to come out to her father. You were good. I believed you were her. Uh, you're not really gay, are you? Because that's cool if you are. I mean, uh... I'm gonna go. Is he gone? I do have a job to do. Narrative gets in the way of the epic theater. Phil takes out a cell phone and calls. Oh boy, here we go again. She puts out a sign, wherein the long, torturous process of dating begins. Phil calls. Hey, it's Phil. From the party? I got your phone number from Alyssa. Listen, I'm sorry uh, I sounded like such a jerk with what I said about plays. I mean, I, I liked Les Mis. Did you see the movie? In the dialectical epic theater, art does not construct fantasy or rely on nostalgia. You want to check it out? You should be aware you are in performance space. Are you? Pinch yourself. You are here. I am here. Isn't that nice? Art serves to de-sentimentalize man. Man is man. Here, Phil's our man. So obnoxious as to almost be endearing. I'm sorry it seemed like I was picking you up, trying to pick you up. Maybe we shouldn't call it epic. Who wants epic? Uh, listen, do you want to go out sometime? We could go to some theater and I could pay. Is Shakespeare still playing? I'm a... You want to see who? A macabre devised dance set in the suburbia of the 1950s, huh? Is it a musical? Point A places out a sign. Whereupon things happen that happen on a bad date. See you tomorrow. This whole thing won't go more than 15 minutes. Phil takes her by the arm. They stroll. Whoops, the narrative already started. Swept us off our feet. Hmm, where were we? Me? I'm into sports, really. Okay, that was a joke. I'm a botanist. 
Right, Phil B., the botanist. I've heard them all. I study rose sports. They're a naturally occurring genetic mutation on a branch of a bush. I used to make hybrids, which I loved, but I got frustrated. You know, when you get close to something, but you think you can't have it, you just end up jetting. Now I just mostly watch hybrids and take notes for pesticide companies. Stasis. Intrusion. Oh yeah, obstacle. Phil takes out two chairs and places them center stage. They sit. In the dialectical theater, we... Shh! We must confront the audience directly. Phil pulls the old yarn, yawn and arm around move and leans in. I don't get it. They must be alienated from events on stage. Do they call it absurd because you pay $30 for it? That way they are forced to make decisions for themselves. Theater becomes empowering. Listen, can we go get a drink or... The play ends. Oh, is it over? Okay, now we clap. Wow, so that's the kind of stuff you like. I mean, you want people to be entertained, right? The audience is sometimes not ready for the epic theater because they want to be whisked away by the narrative. They want fantasy. They eschew confronting reality. But that's the point, to make them ready. People don't get hybrids either. They don't understand what it's like to make something new. The audience will fall back on what's familiar to them instead of looking at the argument presented on stage. They miss what's right in front of them. Maybe if people just paid more attention to plants. Plants only do what's necessary. The audience will hide behind anything that provides it protection. Religion. Science. The play was interesting. Interesting. The most overused word in theater feedback. It can mean everything and nothing, even if you mean it in a nice way. Never tell a theater person their work is interesting. But nothing happened. Nothing was necessary. Sometimes the artist, the creator of the dialectic, just needs the audience to listen. Phil exits. That's all they really need, someone to hear them. Phil re-enters, takes his cell phone out, and calls. Hey, it's Phil, from the... Yeah. Hopelessly takes out a Cleveland scene magazine. I saw there was this environmental dance performance someone was staging in a bathroom in Edgewater Park. I thought maybe... Oh, you've seen it. Searching. Oh, uh, there's a reading of a... Bretto about a blind Bengali Nebraskan hip-hop artist at the 78th Street Studios. You have a rehearsal tomorrow? What's it? A play about plays? Wow, that sounds interesting. Sometimes the narrative does not require narration. Point A places a sign that reads, wherein the people are raised from the oppression of ignorance. Do you think I could come watch? I could buy you a drink afterward. Yes. And the cast too. Great. See you then. Okay, bye. She's totally into me. Phil places a chair in the middle of the stage while point A goes on into the audience. A beat as he watches point A's performance. Really? That was your play? Well, the truth, I, I didn't get it, but I loved it. Point A considers him for the first time. She re-enters re the stage. The dialectical theater inspires revolutionary change in even the most obdurate and unready factions of the bourgeoisie. Really? You want to go get a drink? You want me to get the rest of the cat? Really? Just us? Well, great. They stand or sit as if at a bar. Obnoxious bar music assaults them. Okay, think of it this way. Each nucleotide corresponds to a letter. You have your A's, your T's, your G's, and your C's. A goes with T, C goes with G. When I was a little girl, I used to put on plays for my mother in our backyard. Out near Illyria, we had this massive rose garden. When my mom retired, she sold it. Except sometimes when you get a mutation, we call that a sport. You get six different kinds of sports. I study preclinical chimeras where... you I'm boring. Oh, you like it? It's pretty amazing to, to make, make something, something new. new. That is the point of the dialectical theater. It's the one place you can kind of create the world instead of being controlled by it. I haven't made one in years. He touches her ever so lightly. That's the thing about narratives. They always get in the way of the dialectic. There's no money in making roses. Now I research pesticides. But you were trying to make something new tonight. That's the way it was with my roses. 
Mind the gap, no matter how hard it gets. I think I heard you tonight. The point of the dialectical theater is not to be transported. The dialectical... I heard you. Phil goes to her. He kisses her. Beat. She returns his kiss. Beat. Phil exits, but comes back on soon wearing a, a white lab coat. He sets up a small botany lab on the other side of the stage. Um, where were we? We have stasis, then we have intrusion, then we have complication, and a new temporary stasis is established. Can't we just stop at complication? I like to keep it complicated. This is nice. Complicated. <coughs> okay, then, a new obstacle arises. More difficult for the protagonist to overcome than the last, which heightens dramatic tension. Or so the story goes. She holds up a sign that says, Wherein the age-old fight between science and art reasserts itself between lovers. She takes out a cell phone. She dials, opens her mouth, and then... Hello? Oh, hey you. Listen, this is great. I got up this morning, I went to the lab, I had a report due to ticked off, but instead, I picked up this old lab data on my last hybrid, and I had a breakthrough, and I've been working on it all morning. I... What do you mean it's 9 p.m.? Checks his watch. Oh my god, our date! I'm sorry, I... Okay, uh, we missed the thing. Let me just... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you in 20 minutes. Exits. This is the point where you want to connect. You want to abandon the distance. This is where you tire of Ver from Dunk's effects. Hey, hey, sorry I got so caught up. It was so exciting to be making again. I mean, if anyone understands it, it should be you. She turns to him. This is where the danger is. The audience wants to connect. The actor wants to connect. The narrative binds us close. We want to live in the moment. It's just the dialectic it's is to me. black and white. The point A and point B are not reconcil reconciled. It is the presentation of opposing ideas. You are not Phil. You are point B. You are Biff. I want it to be important to you. He exits back to his lab and his experiments, picks up the phone, and dials. Hey, you, it's me. Still at the lab. Getting really close. But I'm distracted. You distract me. The A effect weakens, while the distancing effect strengthens. The fragrance is called reminiscence. It's, well, I know we were on, but I can't tonight. I promise. Tomorrow. Bye, you. Phil goes back to work. Point A walks into the audience, begins to set up a projector. A confluence of complications... Obstacles abound. The narrative, now closing its deep middle game, moves inward as Vine plot points attempt to converge. A phone rings. A voiceover is heard with Phil's voice. Hi, you've reached Dr. B's lab. Please leave me a flowery message and I'll get back to you. Hi, Phil. This is Lori. The piece is almost done. You want to come check it out? A new sign. Where an irreconcilable differences irreconcilably differ. No answer. Beat. A phone rings. Phil continues to work. Hi, you've reached Dr. B's lab. Please leave me a flowery message and I'll get back to you. Hey, are you still working? I almost have it. The narrative is, what I really want to say is I need you to answer, but you won't, so bye. As Phil smells the flower. Good luck, Phil. No, no, wait, I, I have it. Crosses the stage to hand it to her. Fantastic, Lori. That's the name. Point A crosses to Phil's side. Phil, I... you did this for me? What you did with that play, it made me want to make again. It's your paraclinical chimera. Do you think you could stop for a bit to smell it with me? I don't think so. There's uh, so much more to make. It's like your play, that... He exits. The narrative. That's the point about narratives. They always get in the way of the dialectical theater. It is a theater. She smells the rose. Reminiscence. She exits. End of play.